Okay. Good afternoon, Coach Frazier. How are you doing this afternoon? George I'm doing well, George. How are you? Great, great. Doing all right. Uh, still here in South Florida. It looks like it's going to rain, so hopefully I get out here early tomorrow and make it on back up, to, uh, make it up your way. Okay. But the question is, on the defensive side of it, uh, you guys seem to really contain, because uh, Tariq Hill, we really didn't hear his name called much at all. Uh, you seem like you had some really good coverage for him. Uh, what's, what's your assessment of the young guys, in, including Jamarcus uh, Ingram's play, uh, and of course, Christian Bensford before the injury? What's, what's your take on their play yesterday? Yeah, George, I, I think overall, those guys did a really good job. Tyreek Hill, as you know, is a fantastic player who can really threaten you downfield. And our guys did a good job of limiting uh, his exposures in, in the ball game and not giving up the big play to him. Um, and so overall, we were pleased with their work. Uh, they came in and really prepared during the week on a short week and did a good job of tackling and, and really trying to control that passing game. Yes, and your blitz packages, you seem to pick your timing or when the blitz. And it seemed like it was always you would catch them just when Tua looked like he was feeling comfortable back there. Boy, bam, you guys came in and, and, and really uh, made some great plays. Uh, uh, and, last, and last part two of that is uh, Matt Milano's play. What would you, your comments on his uh, play yesterday? Yeah, Mac made he made some big plays for us. Uh, the third down and two stop uh, in the run game that they tried early in the ball game. That was a, a, a big stop for us. We needed to get off the field. I think they had uh, gotten a penalty to continue a series. And then the next third down, Matt comes up with a big play. And then he had another uh, tackle for us on the ball game to help us to get off the field again. So I think overall, he played very, very well for us. I know there's one play he'd like to have back, uh, the one where the quarterback uh, threw a ball in, in the flats and, and he had a chance to maybe intercept it. Uh, but overall, Matt had a had a good football game. And in, in, in the rookie corners, your your comments on that? Yeah, game? you know, unfortunately, Christian got injured, uh, but he was doing well up until that point. I thought Kair, once he settled down, played really well for us uh, and did a good job of being a sound, sound he tackled well. Uh, so I, I was, we were really pleased with the way he played. Now, Jamarcus, that was I mean that was a a big curveball, George, for him to have to come in off the mm -hmm. practice squad and play against all that speed uh, down in Miami. And I thought overall, he did a good job for us. Uh, it was a big challenge for him and he held his own. So that was really encouraging to see. All right, thank you very much. And good luck with uh, containing Lamar. I hope you do the same as well as you did with Tariq Hill yesterday with Lamar Jackson this coming Sunday. Thank you thank for you. your time. Thank you. Hi, Leslie, uh, thanks for doing this. Mark Vaughn here. Uh, two questions on the Ravens. One, just what, uh, do you say what do you think about Lamar's passing from the pocket um, even since the last time you saw him in the playoffs a year and a half ago and uh, second thing on the Ravens their use of big people uh, yeah. bigger personnel packages yeah you, to answer your first question Mark he's really improved uh, his passing uh, you can see it with the numbers uh, he's really worked on it you can tell over the last couple of years and got better at throwing the football down the field his accuracy and the poise he has in the pocket. He's not looking to escape and run around at times. I mean, he's looking to uh, get completions and he's doing a good job of that. So he's much improved. And as far as they're using big people, uh, they are one of those teams uh, that's gonna line up in big people and run their offense. And it's not always just to run the football, they'll pass from those grouping as well. So you've gotta be prepared to handle both the run game when they get uh, the big personnel groups on the field, as well as defending the passing game. Thank you. You're welcome. Coach Frazier, Mookie Hawk is Ruffles Sports Cincinnati. How you doing today, sir? Doing well, Mookie, how are you? I'm great, I'm great. Um, yeah, Kair got his first start. I mean, what, what are your expectations for him playing this way going forward? Yeah, you know, we, we want to just see him continue to grow. Look, that's the, that's the key uh, as a rookie. Uh, you're going to be tested. There are going to be some ups and downs in your game. And uh, that's just part of being a rookie in our league. But the more we put him out there, the better we expect him to get. And I know he's going to work as hard as he can to improve every week. And if that's the case, then we'll be better on defense because he's gaining some valuable, valuable experience as a rookie. And yesterday was, was good for him to go up against that type of speed and athleticism. That should help his confidence, and then he'll line up this week, and he'll have to tackle and, and make some plays down the field against another good offense. 
Absolutely, coach. And key, key player of the game, third and 22. What do you think went wrong defensively there? I think, look, I probably could have helped the guys a little bit more and try to put them in a, in a different position there. I think they were trying to do the very best they could to defend that, that deep ball. And uh, Mike could have done something a little bit different call-wise, put them in a different position, and that might would have helped them. But that was a, that was a big play because it put them in, uh, in position to score. Uh, and, you know, ordinarily we're pretty good. Uh, as a defense in that situation, we didn't get off the field on, on third and 22. So, you know, a disappointing uh, sequence for sure. Yeah, well, I know that's something that's uncharacteristic of your defense coach. And I know you'll get back to the drum board and you know, things corrected. So good luck this week. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Hi, Leslie, it's Jay with the Buffalo News. In regards to preparing for Lamar, I, I think in the past you've maybe used Isaiah McKenzie as like the scout team quarterback. Just how unique of a challenge uh, is he uh, as a player to, to prepare for and to potentially defend? Jay, he, there's no one else in the league like him. Uh, his ability to run their offense, and now that he's grown as a passer as well, He's a hard guy to defend. He was hard before, and it's, it's become tougher now that he's throwing the football as well as he's throwing the ball. So um, you're right. Isaiah sometimes in the past has uh, tried to give us a simulation uh, of Lamar, and uh, it, it's still not the same thing because Lamar is just – he's so dynamic, man, uh, as a runner. And now that he's throwing the ball as well as he, he, he is, uh, it's, it's that much tougher. So – We'll have our hands full trying to slow him down. I watched that run, uh, 79 yards he had a, a, a couple weeks ago, and go like, wow, this guy's just uh, – he's a special talent. Your, uh, your run defense this year, I know that was an area you probably focused a bit on, on the, in the offseason to, to improve, and maybe somewhat quietly you've really done that. I mean, you guys are number two in the league right now. I think it's 57 yards a game. What, what in your mind has keyed that success uh, in limiting the other team's run game right now? Well, you're right, Jay. That was a point of emphasis in the offseason, along with being able to improve our four-man pass rush. And we wanted to get better in our overall run defense. Uh, and I think part of that success is the growth uh, of, of Tremaine for sure. Uh, he's the guy that directs our defense. But you can't talk about good run defense without talking about our front. As well as our front is played uh, when we are able to rush the passer, They've done just as well of being able to help us defend the run. They've done a great, great job of getting a push and then being able to get off of blocks. So the improvement by our front, having the size and athleticism that we have, and then the play of our linebackers, Matt Milano and uh, Tremaine has really helped us as well. And we got some corners, even though we're, they're young right now, they're doing a good job in run support. And hopefully we'll get Jordan back and that's gonna help us also. But it starts with our front and then what we do at the second level with our linebackers. Thanks, Leslie. Have a good week. Thank you. Hey, Leslie, Alex Braski with the Vitavi Daily News. On defense yesterday against the Dolphins, Greg Rousseau had a big game, two sacks, but Von Miller really was un unable to get going. Did one thing lead to the other there in terms of one player being able to get to the quarterback and Von Miller not having such a good game? Uh, were those two things – associated with each other, do you think, in terms of how uh, their offense prepared for your pass rush? Yeah, you know, Alex, I, even though Von didn't necessarily have a number of splash plays, he still was effective. That one, the one play where he put the spin move on their left tackle and came back and batted the ball uh, early in the game, that was a big play for us. It got him, got him into a, a third down situation that we needed. Uh, and all of our players benefit from Vaughn being on the field. So Greg is a, is a beneficiary of Vaughn being on either side. And that makes a big difference when people are game planning your defense uh, because of Vaughn. So it, it gives other guys an opportunity to really step up. And because of that, uh, you're seeing Greg really rise to the forefront. He's had a great off season and now he's having a great season as well. Uh, but uh, I, I think the same thing can be said for uh, Daquan as well. Those guys all benefit from having Vaughn on the defensive line with them. 
Now you saw kind of two ends of a situation the past couple of weeks, Matt Milano recording the pick six in the previous game and then dropping what could have been a pick six uh, in this game against the Dolphins. Just can you talk about the difference in dynamic dealing with the the increase of emotion when you get a pick six, six and, and the difference when when you have a letdown like that and how you deal with that on the sideline to not have a letdown on the following drive? Yeah, you know, you you try your best as a player and as a coach to move on from that play as disappointing as it, as it is when you don't come up with one you think you should have had. Uh, you got to be able to move on from it. We talk about that all the time, Alex, and uh, you got to be able to mentally move forward because if you keep playing that replaying that play over in your mind, it's going to affect the next play or the next series. So I think Matt did a good job of moving on from that and coming back out and continuing to play good football for us. And uh, I'm sure when he's in that position again, he's going to catch that ball and it's going to be a touchdown for us. All right. Thanks, Coach. You're welcome. Hi, Leslie. Um, you know, I think it's about 10 months since uh, Tredavious, right? And obviously you guys made it all the way back to kind of the precipice of, of his return. How much emotionally have you kind of gone through, you know, this with Micah this week, knowing what it was like with Tredavious last year and now a guy that's been such a big part of your program for the last few years, I mean, really all of it, uh, to have something like this happen to him? Yeah, I mean... The news about Micah receiving that, that was that was hard news for sure. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, you know, I knew he was dealing with some things and you're always hoping uh, for the best. And so I was hoping that, you know, we'd get him back at some point. And then when I got the news that he was down for the year, then you just got to get the other guys ready. I mean, that, that provides an opportunity for them to go out and, and play and, and hopefully uh, play at a high level. But it's hard to replace a Micah Hyde, you, I mean, you know, Matt, what he's meant to our defense and it's not just his playmaking, but his leadership as well. And so now to maybe be on the verge of getting uh, Trey Davis back, uh, that will definitely lift everyone's spirits for sure. We're all hoping, got our fingers crossed that he's going to be back soon, uh, you know, with our, with, the, with our defense and helping us to have success. So uh, we're hopeful. And, you know, in the meantime, uh, we'll get the guys that are able to play, ready to play, and we'll go out and, and, and do the things we need to do to help our team win. Mm -hmm. And then on the uh, the third and 22 play, you, you talked about it a little bit. I'm curious, without going into like, what play you would have actually called, what would you do have done differently? What, what, is it from a personnel perspective, uh, putting people in different spots? Because I think we talked about explosives going into the game, and, and they really didn't have many outside of that one play. Yeah, I mean, that was a big part of their success on, on offense leading and going into our game. Their yards have to catch along with the explosives down the field. So that was a point of emphasis all week long. And you're right, we did a good job in the game of not giving up those explosives over the top other than that play. And the same thing with the yards have to catch. I thought our guys did a good job of tackling and minimizing their yards have to catch. Uh, on that one play, Matt, you know, there are some other things that we could have done or that I could have done. Uh, for our guys to put them in a, a little better position uh, to maybe play that play or anticipate that play. And if there's one I could have back, that would probably be the one I, I, I won't back. And I'm guessing you can't get too far into the details of what those things would have been. No, because we may be in that situation again, and you never know who's listening. Gotcha. So, I got you. I appreciate you, Leslie. You're welcome. Hey, Leslie. Um, I was curious if you can remember in all of your time as a player, as a coach, any time having to deal with this amount of injuries and what, you know, with what you're dealing with in the secondary so early in a season, or have you experienced something like this before? You know, it's funny you asked me that when um, on Saturday night, I was asking Brandon uh, Bean, I said, man, have you ever experienced this number of guys at the same time? And we both, we were just trying to recollect this. It's part of our game. I mean, injuries are definitely part of our game. It happens, and, you know, you just have to keep moving forward. But, um, you know, we've been hit with the injury bug, but uh, we got some resilient guys who battle through things. And, uh, you know, it can happen uh, to any team, and, you know, we're dealing with it right now. Um, hopefully we'll get some of those guys back, Alina, soon. And come, you know, what you'd like to be able to do is, like, October, November, December, you just – continue to move forward uh, with the help of your team. And 
Uh, hopefully, as I mentioned, that we'll get some of the guys back this week, uh, for sure next week. Uh, but in the meantime, you just it just means more opportunities for other guys. But uh, it's a challenge, but it seems like all teams go through it at some point in our league. It's just, you know, can you just persevere and be resilient enough uh, just to continue to move forward? And I think we can. Did any specific memories come up when you were talking to Brandon about, you know, a time maybe when you were as a player, or, you know, like something specific come up or is it more just general? Just general. I mean, it. Um, you know, we kept referencing how it happens to teams. Sometimes it's usually over the course of a season. It's not so many in, in one week. You know, we found out a lot of things in one week, but um, uh, usually it's over the course of a season, but it just happens. It just pro football and, and injuries are a part of it. And then I'm curious from your perspective as a coordinator now, you know, as you said, you might get some guys back this week, next week with Trey potentially coming back in the near future. How do you as it like balance? Do you have to adapt your defense a lot based on these injuries? Does Taryn become even that much more important because he is the veteran out there now? Or how does how what kind of adjustments can you make? Yeah, you know, it causes some of the uncertainty sometimes. You you have some plans and ideas in your mind of how you want to use guys, but you have to be certain that you're gonna have certain guys and, and we're still a few days away from knowing exactly who we're going to have at every position um, leading up into our game on, on, on Sunday. So uh, in your mind, you just have different thoughts that you go through, but until you know for certain, it's hard to concretely say, you know, how you're going to approach this situation versus that situation. I don't know if that really answers the question, but no, there's does. a lot of uncertainty. <laughs> Sorry for all the follow-up questions, but just, I guess, on Taryn specifically too, is he, how important is he, especially, you know, with all the injuries, especially on the outside spots and at safety, how is important is to have him and, you know, all he does for this defense? Yeah, Taryn is extremely important to us. Uh, he's one of the best, if not the best, nickelback, nickel corners in the, in the league. So to have his veteran leadership, a guy who's done it, who's, Played a lot of games for us, had a lot of success. It's great to have him out there. His value is extremely important to us because he gives us so much flexibility because, you know, we're able to play nickel to just about any personnel group because of Terrence. So uh, he's invaluable, uh, and he was before the injury. So, I mean, he's, he's a very valuable piece to what we do. So we're fortunate to have him. Thanks. You're welcome. Hey, Leslie, it's uh, John Worrell. Um, hey, John. Without – me wanting to get any like details of, on where Tredavious is at uh, in his rehab, knowing how competitive he is and seeing all his teammates in the in the secondary going down, how much do you, um, in your conversations do you really have to hold him back from wanting to really rush back into this thing? Yeah, you know, John, when I when I've talked with him, the only thing I've done is just try to encourage him and just maybe get brought up to date on how he's doing, but. Definitely don't want to put any pressure on him. I uh, just want him to continue to do what he's doing with the doctors, with the trainers. And when they tell us he's ready to go, you know, we'll be fired up and excited to have him back. But uh, just want him to go at, at, at his own pace. You know, we'll hold it down uh, until he's back. Uh, but we look forward to eventually getting him back. Yeah, I, I guess that was my thought. Could that be the light at the end of the tunnel here, Tredavious? Well, it'll be exciting to, to have him back for sure, uh, but for a lot of different reasons. It wouldn't be just because of the fact that we are a little banged up right now. He brings so much to the table, as you know, as a player and, and as a leader as well. So um, it would be just great to have him back, period, just to, to get see him back on the field again, backpedaling, uh, making plays for us. Uh, yeah, the injury situation heightens it a little bit, but – it will be exciting to have him back in, 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 on any circumstances. I hear you. Thank you. You're welcome. That's all we have today. Thanks, Leslie. All right. You're welcome.